All right, what's going on guys? Welcome everybody to another video on the channel. Hope you all are having a good weekend. So in this video, we are going to be talking about the 10 things that you didn't know about Black Ops Cold War Zombies. These things can range from anything that is a small but very useful technique to employ, all the way to side Easter eggs that are quite obscure but grant you insane rewards if done properly. So I think you guys are going to learn a lot from this video. We're going to be covering a lot of side Easter eggs and some techniques that you can start using in your game that's going to make your experience a lot better. If you guys do enjoy today's video the only thing i ask in return is to drop a thumbs up it, that would be absolutely amazing and remember to subscribe if you're new to the channel as the growth has been on fire recently i don't exactly know how else to show you guys or tell you how grateful i am of the support on the channel as of lately but just so you guys know i i don't want you to ever forget it but without further ado guys let's go ahead and get into this so coming in today at our number 10 spot is a very simple technique and is a piece of knowledge that if you've been playing zombies for a number of years you'll probably know about this one now Ever since Origins in Black Ops 2, virtually every single Zombies map has had change under the perk machines. And so what you can do at the start of every match, you can go prone in front of every perk machine in the game and get a free 100 points. Now, unfortunately, this does not stack with double points active. You cannot prone in front of a perk machine and get 200 points instead of the typical 100. But either way, it's just something crucial to know because if you need to scavenge a few extra points, especially in the early game, and you're just a little bit short, just remembering to prone under perk machines to take advantage of that is extremely valuable and something I always recommend developing. Moving on, coming in at the number nine spot involves being in the dark ether. So whenever you activate the portal and you enter into the other dimension in the dark ether, whether initially trying to get pack-a-punch at the beginning of your game, or if you show up at some point during the main Easter egg quest and obtaining some of the wonder weapon upgrades, whenever you're here, these crystals are going to reset and you can shoot them to break things. Now, a lot of you guys probably already know that, but what you may not know is that these crystals can not only give you armor shards and points and things of that nature but they can also give you free purple weapons and also free perks now this has only happened to me once on stream i was able to pull juggernaut from one of these crystals albeit they're so unbelievably rare i have had reports of other people saying that they were able to get like speed cola or stamina from these crystals but i've been unable to confirm that and the best part about these things is that they reset literally every time you go back in so you have almost infinite ways to farm extra shards or scrap or even try and get these perks or weapons very very valuable and honestly not a feature at all to be slept on whether you're just starting d machine or whether you've been playing it for a long time since it came out extremely important to do coming today at the number eight spot is going to be the coffin dance easter egg now i don't know if everyone exactly knows how to do this one just yet but i would suspect that a majority of the community who has already been playing d machine knows how to do this one but essentially you need to shoot five blue orbs after activating activating Pack-a-Punch, and I'm showing you all the locations in this video so that if you want to go and try this yourself, you'll have no problems going and hitting these two, but once you shoot all five of these blue orbs, you will then be teleported back into the Dark Aether, and as you guys know, if you've seen this sequence before it plays out, you will get a basically dance scene with the coffin dance meme with zombies, and this will play out for about 20 or 30 seconds, and what you get out of this is the most important thing, it's the actual uh, box reward. Now, contrary to popular belief, there really is is no way to determine what you're going to be getting out of the reward system. I've been doing a lot of testing with this easter egg and I've gotten a lot of accounts from other people who have verified the same thing. A lot of people think that once you get the box you go up to it and you wait until it's uh, showing orange on the little TV so that you can get an epic reward but after doing this over and over again with different variables and different circumstances I've come to the conclusion that I think it is com still completely random. There's no way to determine what you're going to be getting out of the box. I think it's entirely luck, but either way, you are, feel free to try to control it or figure out a way to, but either way, it gives you free Juggernaug and some other nice goodies. Now, coming in today at number seven, we have the free score streak or jump scare Easter egg, and to do this, you need to be in the dark ether. At any point after you've made Pack-a-Punch, you can do this, and you need to shoot a few floating bodies. The first one is found here in the control room laying in the water. It's kind of hard to see, so you got to pay close attention. The second location can be found over in the pond just behind behind this tree. Now keep in mind, these bodies only spawn one at a time, so you need to check all the locations, and if it doesn't happen to be there for you, you need to go back and recheck it after you shot another. The next one can be over here on the crash site just behind the plane wing. You'll shoot it, and you'll get like a small audio cue letting you know that you hit that one correctly. The next one is in the particle accelerator room just up against the like red glowing background here. That one is really easy to see, and you shouldn't have any trouble with that one. And then finally, the last one should be out in 
in the yard and this final one in relation to where the other bodies were is kind of farther away but it's like up against the pink background of the jellyfish so you should be able to spot that one as well and then once you've shot that final one there will be a last body over at the pond section and you can shoot this one to get a free score streak or if you run under it or a friend does they will get a nice and epic jump scare so you can choose one or the other you can get the jump scare or the free score streak depending on whether you shoot that final body or not either way really cool little easter egg and i recommend you can go, come in here and like troll your friends and stuff or just get like free sentry guns and, and war machines if you want as well moving on next we have the cassette tape easter egg and this was one of the first ones to be discovered when the game came out now there are three locations for these cassettes the first one is like sort of on this shelf in this cabinet in the living room inside of nocturne toten you can go ahead and pick those up now you're not going to get any audio cues when you've collected them just know that if they're not there then you have gathered it the next one is over in the medical bay on top of this shelf just near like the right side of the barrier pretty like under light and, and easy to see it's uh, very illuminated well and then that's the second one the third and final one you can just run over straight to the particle accelerator and out of the three this is probably the most difficult one to see with your eyes but it is still at like your point of view level so if you come over to the shelf uh just over on the right side you're gonna see it just on the corner of that metal desk and then once you've picked up the third one give it a few seconds and then an absolute banger by my boy kevin sherwood is gonna start playing and you've activated the song easter egg Moving on though, this next thing is going to require you to have either a scoped DMR or a scoped AR along with Deadwire as its ammo mod. Now, what we're going to be doing is lining up three satellites and pointing them towards Nocturne Toten. And the first one can be found just as you come out of the bunker and you're in spawn. And you can shoot this a few times. You can see the plate rotate and you need to point it towards Nocturne Toten itself. So if you lined up correctly how I do in this gameplay, you should be good to go there. The second one is located near the pond just behind Quick Revive. You can see this like sort of behind the trees and then you're going to do the exact same thing rotate the plate so that it's facing nocturne toten and the like actual satellite pole that it has and then the final one if you stand on top of the plane wing you should be able to see that one way off in the distance this is probably the most difficult one to see if it's lined up properly but you'll know you've done it right when all three converge together and then shock this middle beam and then the radio that's located just under that pole is going to start reading off numbers and it's going to glow blue now interestingly you get 1500 free points simply by doing this and it's not exactly like great in terms of making your money back on what you spent on dead wire it is kind of cool but i think there's a little more to this easter egg that has yet to be discovered and what that is i'm not really sure i believe that that radio that's reading out the numbers is probably either a cipher in itself or a key to one of the ciphers i'm not really sure if that's been discovered yet but this is maybe a little more to it than we already know moving on next up we have a cool little technique that you can do while doing an easter egg step where you have to move this golden or this decontamination agent so if you have stamina up all the way upgraded to its tier 3 form and you can backpedal faster you actually only need to upgrade it once to get the backpedal speed but you can walk backwards with this decontamination agent and it's actually faster than walking forward which is so bizarre that doesn't make sense at all and you need a little bit of like spatial awareness to walk backwards and be safe but you can also use your mini map to help guide where you are and this is like it's an extremely valuable tech technique if you happen to be struggling on this step albeit it's not really that difficult but if you're struggling with this uh, for whatever reason in solo consider doing it this way and you literally just move quicker so for any speedrunners, that might help you out a little bit as well coming today at the number three spot is a bit of a weird one and if you've played black ops 3 zetsubo no shima and made it to round 50 on that map this easter egg is quite similar although you don't need to go nearly as far in the rounds now this easter egg shows anywhere up from 40 to 45 and you're gonna get basically the same outcome you're gonna get this distant monster easter egg where this absolute unit of a monster walks by in the dark ether now it's a lot easier to see and it's way cooler when you look at it in the dark ether but i'm going to show you on screen right now what it looks like if you could just you know see the model as is this is what it looks like in the daytime and obviously it looks way cooler in the dark ether mode of it but we don't really know if this is supposed to be interactable or if this does anything differently besides visuals or just to show us that this exists in the map and is there either way you can look out for this easter egg if you happen to be high rounding yourself or with a friend at about 40 to 45 coming today at the number two spot is that fact that you can mantle 
and literally jump over just about everything in the entire game. It, we have to break out of this box as zombie players if you've played older games where you're so constrained by like railings and paths and everything. Everything, especially in the particle accelerator room, can be mantled and jumped over. And you can pretty much use this as your like personal parkour playground. It's absolutely amazing. Another thing I noticed is that if you run across the railing, zombies really don't like that. Pretty much this entire room is lined with railing over the staircases and just around the diameter of the room, but they really don't like it at all, and they have a hard time tracking you when you are on the rail. So if you happen to be like low HP or for your red screen, you can save yourself by kind of getting on here and then making it as difficult as possible for the zombies to track you. It's really insane, and I think a lot of people don't take advantage of this when they could. Now, finally, guys, coming today at the number one spot, I'm going to show you how to get any weapon you want, whether it's your loadout gun or any sort of rarity into a free legendary. So this Easter egg requires you to be in the dark ether and already have done pack-a-punch, but you can come over to the medical bay just behind Speed Cola and shoot these four red buttons behind this barricade. And Nova Gas is going to pour out, and then as soon as the door on the left has a green light, you know the monster is ready to come out. So what you need to do now is every once in a while when a zombie comes out of this barrier coming down the hallway, you need to shoot that fourth button where the door is, and then a monster hand will come out. Now, here's what's tricky about this. It's really hard to do on solo because you're constantly getting harassed by zombies coming from behind you, and you don't get a lot of spawns coming from that actual hallway. It's significantly easier to do in co-op, and you might be asking, well, how many kills do you need to get with this hand? You need to do this 15 times, and that can be a little bit tricky, especially if you're trying to do this by yourself. A little tech Technique I've been working on for solo is you can run the zombies around the map after you've got a full horde and then they're going to constantly respawn whenever you come back to this area if you do take a tour on the map and then you can slowly get kills that way every time the hand comes out it does need like 30 seconds or so to re charge and like cool down so you're gonna have to wait a little bit it can't be spammed which is unfortunate again much easier to do co-op but once you do this 15 times and get zombie kills with that hand whatever weapon is whatever you're currently holding will be upgraded all the way to legendary so it's definitely worth doing if you can get this done right and is significantly better than trying to like save up scrap for it and everything so it's just a, also a really fun easter egg to do end up getting this one let me know if you're able to pull this easter egg off as it's just a ton of fun but anyways guys that is going to be it for the video those are the top 10 things that you didn't know you could do in black ops cold war zombies if you learned anything from this video or if you found it entertaining please show me by dropping a thumbs up before you go and remember to subscribe to the channel if you have not done already before you go so you don't miss any more zombies videos like this i'll have plenty more coming your way and i also stream zombies almost every day over on twitch if you haven't caught me over there live yet and want to come say hi links in the description below but other than that guys hope you all have a fantastic rest of your day and I'll see you in the next stream or the next video. Take it easy. I got to go and peace out.